how does it feel like to be set on fire? What do you do for people to actually not being burned? Like, what, what, can you explain the trick to me? <laughs> well, no, I, I don't know. I've always had a fascination. It's like with fireworks. You know, people like fireworks. It's like amazing. But to me, to see, you know, it's from a stunt point of view, to see someone engulfed in flames. I mean, you know, it's, it's out of all the stunts that you can do, it is, you know, it's like having doing a high fall. You know, you do a fall, you're watching, you're going, oh, look at that height of that, or getting through, or getting hit by a car. But with a burn, you know, to sort of think, you know, that's how, how have they done that? Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a very clever process, which has obviously been pioneered over the years to where we are now. Um, but my first foray into fire stunts was doing the fire safety on Braveheart mm -hmm. for a couple of the performers, which was amazing to watch. And from that day there, it was like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd been on lots of jobs where I was doing fire safety. Um, again, which was amazing, you know. Like I said, the process is—it's um, been—it's de been developed over the years of obviously, you know, where what they used to have back in the old days to where we are now with obviously all these safety gels and fireproof clothing, you know, and silicon masks. But the process is um, that you have uh, formula racing underwear, which looks like basically a set of pajamas. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's either Nomex or Carbon X, and you soak it in a gel which looks like wallpaper glue. Mm -hmm. It's very cold. It's a gel that you have in hospitals for burns. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a coolant gel. And that's saturated in that. And basically you put on either three layers, depending on what your process is. There's obviously there's different processes now, but the standard process used to be they used to put on one wet, one dry, one wet, and then your fire suit on top. And your fire suit is made up of, of the same material, but it's three layers. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a fire, it's a fire suit, a formula racing fire suit. Um, and then you put your costume on, and then you put gel on your face. And the gel, like I said, is the coolant gel that you have for burns. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a coolant. It's not water it's in itself. It's a gel. So it just remains on your face until it evaporates cold. Um, and then obviously you use an accelerant, which normally is glue. Mm -hmm. You put glue, obviously in certain areas. You then put either um, alcohol to give it a bit of a... Yeah, and then you obviously have you're going to get lit. Want a tough cocktail, mm -hmm. flamethrower, whatever it is. And obviously you go up. So there's, there's three types of body burns that I would describe. You've got a partial burn, a three-quarter burn, and a full body burn. Mm -hmm. Partial burn could be your arms, maybe mm -hmm. the bottom of your legs, which is fine. You know, don't have that much protection on your face. Then you have a three-quarter burn, which can normally be all of your back, at least, you know, maybe bits of your arms and a little bit on your legs, with your face still exposed, which means that your performance is, you know, you're still performing, but you have the gel on. When you do a full body burn, you wear a prosthetic mask, which is a mask that's been made to look like the actor, or it's your features, because once you're completely aligned, you can't really tell. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, you do that with a breath hold. So the mask has been designed, it's got Pyrex lenses, which obviously are fireproof. Um, and inside the mask, it's like a DV, like where you go diving, but it's just a, a silicon tube that sits on your mouth. You breathe normally through it, and then when you before you get set on fire, you do your breath hold, and then literally, you're performing holding your breath. Then you have a signal to say that obviously you want to be put out or that obviously you know, you're feeling the heat go through, which is whatever, whatever signal you decide, it's either go onto your hands and knees with your arms spread or your hands in front. Whatever you've decided that you've rehearsed, mm -hmm. that's the signal for your team because you can't ask for help mm -hmm. because you can't, it's impossible. So it's not even about screaming, no one knows if you're actually performing, mm -hmm. so you have a, a visual signal, there's no verbal signal. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you put the person out, obviously make sure that you, know, you take off their mask, and if they have any hot spots, because normally what happens when you get put out, the heat carries on penetrating through the costume. Mm. So it's not that you're going to get burnt as in a live flame, but it's a heat transference, mm. which obviously can give you, it's like a steam burn. Mm -hmm. So obviously CO2 doesn't normally put that out, it just takes off what's on the top. So either you get a wet towel or just douse them with a bucket of water, but normally, you know, a wet towel and then the water just goes through the fibers and you're cool. Um, and then obviously, you know, you take them off, check them out, throw your, you know, burnt costume away so it doesn't, you know, so it's not, you know, hazardous. Mm and then go have your shower and relax. What happens if you breathe in? Or it's impossible to breathe in? Completely? No, no, that's the thing. It is, it is possible and obviously you'd burn your lungs. So a full body burn is something that obviously you have to be very comfortable with. I mean, if I, you know, if I said to you, let's say for instance, run around this room, pretending you're on fire, exhale, ah, yeah, that's fine. That's performance. Mm -hmm. And obviously if the, if the flame catches, you can maybe turn, you know, and you've got gel. Mm -hmm. Now do the same thing, holding your breath, where you've got to run, bun, bouncing the stuff. One, your performance is going to be a little bit different because mm -hmm. you're tense. But at whatever point you decide, you have to know that you can't start breathing in while you're standing up on fire. 
the minute you hit the floor, if you've been covered up to glue for about here, which is normally where you go up to the breast line, mm -hmm. the minute you hit the floor, that already gets put out. So in theory, you can take a cheeky breath because by right, the, the floor mm -hmm. is against your face. So you could go, yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit of a breath. But you know that the minute if you're panicking and you're thinking, or, you know, I can't, the heat's going mm -hmm. through my costume, or for whatever reason, I can't hold any longer, the minute you go down, your fire safety puts you out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, obviously, what you can't do is obviously breathe once they're putting you out with CO2, because if the CO2 goes down, because it acts obviously cutting oxygen, <gasps> you'll obviously, you know, you'll start, you know, basically yeah. not being able to breathe. Um, but normally, before you do a full body burn, you've done various partial burns. Mm -hmm. And you've probably rehearsed with a mask. Mm. Um, but yeah, you definitely do not breathe in when you're when you're completely engulfed in flames. Um, you know, if you've got set up and for some reason you lost concentration, you have to go down because there's no way, you know, if you breathed in, you will take the flames straight into your lungs. Mm. How long do you usually need to kind of like it's 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 not like 10 or 20 or 30 seconds, like it's probably minutes of No, the your most the most I mean I can only speak for myself, the most that I've been set on fire when I've performed is a minute. I mean, a minute with three cameras or whatever is a long time on fire. Yeah. Um, if anyone goes over a minute long, it's either a, a live show or some kind of world record. But really on camera, a minute of someone on fire is a long time. You think 60 seconds, mm -hmm. you know, a fight sequence, you know, but a minute of fire. Now, if you're doing a film where you've got zombies or something, where you've got people being chased on fire, then it's multiple takes, mm -hmm. you know, multiple setups. But a person, an individual on fire, normally, 40 seconds is kind of about minimum, mm. you know, unless obviously the idea is that someone gets engulfed in flames and they're straight on him trying to put him out. Mm -hmm. But that depends on the actual sequence itself. But of all the burns that I've done, being set with a flamethrower, Molotov cocktail, um, it's normally probably up to about a minute. Mm. That's max. And not apart from that, you're, one either your costume is now this, you know, it's kind of falling apart, or the glue and the accelerant uh, that you put on top is now burnt away. Mm. So, but really about a minute's max. Mm. Which is still a long time, especially if you oh, yeah, need definitely. to run and move and then you do some, that's that's a lot. <laughs> and absolutely, and the thing is obviously, I mean, even though you've choreographed everything, you know, a minute in your head sounds like a long time. Mm. I mean, you know, I've seen people that do a count that actually will count loud in the background. Um, but normally performance wise, you know, you do your stunt, whatever you've rehearsed. And unless you hear someone saying, you know, to get put out down, um, you carry on performing. Um, obviously at the end of the day, the thing is when you're doing fire stunts, if you do have other people around you, you have to be very aware that obviously at the end of the day, if you trip, you know, your vision is very minute when you're looking through these, you know, silicon masks. So you could fall mm -hmm. and land on someone. I think the most trickiest burn that I did was on Hitman's Bodyguard, which is at the end of the film. Uh, so at the end of the film, you know, uh, Samuel Jackson's character has escaped from prison. He's in some kind of South American bar dancing with Samuel Hayek. And out of nowhere, a bar fight stuff happens. And a guy comes in on fire in the background, stumbling through stuff out of frame as the camera sort of zooms in and closes on the actors. Now that for me was probably the most scariest job I've ever done because all it needs is someone to slip and trip or land on me or me to go and I'm on fire with my, you know, obviously if you're not expecting, you're gonna go flying mm -hmm. and land on someone. And our two principal actors were wearing, well basically they were no, dis no different distance from where you were. Mm -hmm. I was running past here. And obviously I'd rehearsed it that when I did the stunt, because my worry was the visibility. Plus I've got lights inside the, the set. Um, and all you need to do is lose your bearings and you have no idea. And also what ends to happen is that sometimes your lenses fog up. Mm -hmm. So if your lenses fog up and you lose concentration, you don't know where you are. So you'd have to literally go down onto the floor. So I changed the fire stunt to suit my performance. So I moved the snooker table or a pool table where I was coming through a doorway right in front. So I knew that as soon as I came in, I would hit the table and buckle up on it. I then turned 45 degrees, went running along the, uh, hit the bar, the actual bar of the actual um, the club, went along the bar, and then I used my hand at the bottom to know that I was at the end of it. Mm. And at the end of the bar, there was a dance stage, which obviously, you know, a little platform. But if I turn and clip that, there's a chance I'd go fly and either go through the set mm. or just land in a heap. So we rehearsed this multiple times and then I rehearsed it with my eyes closed. Now, even though it's something that's relatively simple, mm -hmm. my concern was the cast and the other stuntmen. Mm -hmm. Either I would trip and land on one of them, or one of them could trip and land on me. But the main thing, as long as I didn't lose my bearings, um, and that it was it was a confined space. Um, and you know, we got it in one take, and it was great, and you know, it all went perfect. 
but it could also go the other way. Any other like most complex stunts that you did that you remember? Well, another another burn that I did, which was out in a western, I went and shot out in Almeria in Spain, a, a film called The Long Kill, um, where I played a bandit, a, a baddie, and we're inside a cave. I come out on a horse. Um, our hero shoots, the horse rears, I got a torch, and I land on a campfire. And I get set on fire, and kind of as I'm flailing around, he gets his shotgun, or his, he, you know, his Winchester rifle, and shoots me, and I, f and I fall down dead. And we decided that I was going to fall forwards, just land across, across the fire. But what happened was that I didn't have too much gel on my side, so when I was doing my wailing around, the flames hit me in the face and caught me on slightly surprised. So I shifted my performance from where I was standing to about another five feet to my right, not realizing that where I was going to land, there was a drop. So I did my bullet hit, knowing that we're not going to go again. So I did a reaction. It wasn't as good as a reaction I'd like to have done because the flames were really hitting me in the face. And I did my reaction and as I fell, I remember not hitting the ground, continuously going. And I must have fallen about 10 foot onto the ground. And I did one and a half turns in midair, which was never planned. Mm. But because I wasn't expecting it, I didn't get hurt. Mm. Which, land, you know, jumping side on onto the ground, even though it's gravel, mm -hmm. from 10 foot. No, of course. You know, um, but I wasn't wearing any pads uh, because in theory, there was no reason for me to wear pads. I was going to take the bullet here and just, you know, just do a fall onto the floor. Mm -hmm. um, so that one was a tricky one. That one slightly went wrong, but you know, and it's funny because when you see it, obviously they weren't expecting me to go to so the camera kind of going, you know, had to follow me. It's mm -hmm. a bit jerky, but it still worked really well and it actually looks pretty good. Uh, but that wasn't planned. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no reason to put boxes and stuff because by right, something that was so simple, mm -hmm. and I had vision because I wasn't wearing a mask, but the thing of just shifting me across because the flames caught me um, was fine. It's just I didn't realise that where I was going, there was a drop. Uh, it didn't. It didn't come out. Um, but yeah, that was that was one that you know, kind of went wrong. But I, I kind of got got away with it.